Why was I the worst character? <laughs> Without a paddle. That is correct. Without a paddle. Which seems like it was, what, 10 years later? 2004. So close. Nine, nine, years, nine later. years later. Now this again, directed by Stephen Brill. Uh, screenplay by Harris Goldberg. Screenwriter of Deuce Bigelow, Male Gigolo. <laughs> Oh, that would be why all of the uh, women were non-prevalent in this film. Male gigolo is redundant. Yes. Which is why I want them to do a, a spin-off called uh, something or another Bigelow, female gigolo. <laughs> all right. So, uh, story credit on this goes to Fred Wolf. Fred Wolf also, I believe, has a story credit on Joe Dirt. <laughs> I love Joe Dirt. And Joe Dirt 2. I haven't seen it yet, but I own it. Now, okay. as terrible as these writing credits these people have are, oh. I am still surprised that these are the people who wrote this movie. Why? Because this really felt like a, a fucking first screenplay. This felt like somebody's first screenplay. And not like... First screenplay to get turned into a movie? I mean, first screenplay that nobody fucking saw. Uh -huh. That was, like, leaked on the internet or something. Oh. This is, like, bad blacklist script level. Here's. And that's the really weird thing about this movie, I thought, is that it feels like a, a first screenplay, like a bad screenplay, and not like a movie that exists. It feels like you're reading a bad screenplay. Anyway, cinematographer on this film... Oh boy, here we go. Jonathan Brown. Cinemato cinematographer on the Pink Panther remake starring Steve Martin. Oh. Yeah. Dear. The cinematography on this film is quite bad. It, everything is very flat. They shot this in New Zealand, and it looks like half the movie is shot on a small set. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, uh, stunt coordinator on this film, uh, Augie Davis. Stunt coordinator on Yogi Bear. <laughs> the <laughs> film with the famous poster where Yogi Bear is fucking boo-boo up the ass, and the tagline is, Great things come in bears. He is also the stunt, the stunt coordinator on Black Sheep. Now, considering the film that we just watched, you're thinking, oh, you mean the Chris Farley film, Black Sheep. No, he was the stunt coordinator on the fucking Killer Sheep movie. I love that. Black Sheep, <laughs> where people get bit by killer sheep and turn into giant sheep people. Yeah, it was stupid as Sheeple. hell. I really love that. Yeah, yeah. Sheeple. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We gotta call them correctly. Sure, sure. Yeah, it was such a dumb movie. I loved it. <laughs> now, the stunt coordinator for the bear sequences in this film... Bart the Bear? Doug Seuss. No, Bart did not co coordinate his own action sequences. I mean, he's a fucking bear. Honestly, I think this one's female. They still call her Bart, though. I could be wrong. I might be remembering that well, wrong. I didn't write it down. Bart's, Bart can be a woman's name. What's it short for? I don't remember, but there was a Bart in... Bartella? Mm -hmm. Well, I, it's hard to tell what's up with her. Anyway, so, yeah, the, the stunt coordinator for the bear uh, stunts, Doug Seuss, who worked on On Deadly Ground, did the bear stunts for that one. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. I love On Deadly Ground. Anyway, so this fucking movie... It exists. Sure does. Mostly on Comedy Central when nobody's watching. This starts with, <laughs> like, like kids, right? Yeah, they were kids. They're like... Four kids. Four kids going on adventures. There seems to be a parallel with Indiana Jones. Right. Specifically with those kids who made their own scene-by-scene -scene remake of Indiana Jones... Although, they shoot this part like it's, like, home video footage from, like, the 80s or 70s or something, but mm -hmm. but it, it it doesn't seem to be in context. All right, well, if it's 2004 and all of them are 30, 
That would make that, what, 80s? Yeah, 80s, early 80s. Yeah. So, um, and then we get, like, the gradual progression of them growing up, which is their children, and then their 30-something no, actors no, 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 no. played by playing college students. Right, and then they're 30. Except the one guy. The one guy's played by, like, a 20-year-old or something. Billy? They don't need to bring him back. Yeah. Right. Okay, so let's run through these people. Let's start with Billy. Because he's the most unrelevant? Yep. Billy, practically the MacGuffin. <laughs> played by Anthony Starr okay. from the TV series Banshee. Really? Where he plays a criminal who lucks into a sheriff's star and ID and That's decides to just become the sheriff of this him? small Pennsylvania town. Mm -hmm. That's so that he can use it as an opportunity to just steal shit. That's yep, that's him. That's Lucas. That's Lucas Hood. Holy fucking shit. Yeah. <laughs> Understand by her reaction. Very different role. <laughs> oh my god. Now I want to watch the opening of that movie again just to see him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh... For context, uh, Sheriff Lucas Hood spent probably 40 to 50% of his screen time either fucking or killing. Yep. My kind of man. Exactly. Great character. Anyway, so also in this group, we have Jerry. Jerry, played by Matthew Lillard yep. from Scream. Oh, he. I always forget he's in yeah. Scream. Spoilers, he was the killer. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> One of the killers. Yeah. SLC Punk. And Ghoulies 4. Ghoulies Go to College. I don't remember him in that. Or maybe it was Ghoulies 3. I'm not sure. But it was definitely Ghoulies Go to College. Wait, wasn't he also on 13? Ghoulies 13? No, no. This in 13 Ghosts? 13 Ghosts, yeah. He, he was, was a psychic. Yeah, he was in that. I forgot about that. He takes a lot of shit roles. Yeah, he does. He's I have a signature... Well, there you go. There he you signed go. a copy of Scooby Doo. Have you seen? <laughs> you should have had him sign a copy of this. I didn't have <laughs> this then. Have you seen the Shaggy memes going around? Yes, I love them. Okay. I signed the petition to get him into Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Also in this group is Dan, played by Seth Green, from the Attic Expeditions and Robot Chicken. Yep. One of and the, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. One of the driving was he forces. In Buffy? Yeah, he was, he, in? he was a werewolf. Oh, what? He, 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 he was, was the nerdy girl's werewolf boyfriend. I, I never watched Buffy. Yep, yeah, there you go. Yeah, why did you think you would know who he was then? I don't know. I, I figured <laughs> I would have heard that he was in it. Yeah. It's like second season. This one that was the best. Yeah. Even when it was the best, it really wasn't that good. It's like we have, a, as a culture, have finally gotten around to sort of understanding that maybe Joss Whedon was never really that good. Yeah. That's fair. But I still like certain things in Firefly. S certain things are pretty good, but, like, try to find a full good episode. It's, it's going to be rough. Mm, yeah. Okay, also in this group of people, unfortunately, Tom. Played by? Played by Dax Shepard from Chips. The Chips movie. And they made a Chips movie. They made a Chips movie? They, they made put a, in it. Jack, Dax Shepard they put in it. Who uh, else? He, uh, Michael Pena. Poor Michael Pena. Michael Pena was Ponch. Of see. course he was. He was also in Let's Go to Prison and Idiocracy. Those are the two that I can name off the top of my head. Anything else? The most acceptable he ever was was in Idiocracy when he was the lawyer. Who was an idiot. <laughs> yes, and so so it fit, finally. Finally the casting made sense. Is there somebody in here? Because I keep hearing noises. Uh, that's the acorns on the roof. Yeah. It's windy out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> um, Dax fucking Shepard, the guy who somehow is in movies, I think because he has friends. Uh, His wife's famous, too. Yeah, uh, Kristen Stewart, who Bell. is... Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell. Right! I <laughs> get my Kristen, Kristen's mixed up. Not Kristen Stewart. Also a good actress, but yeah, Kristen Bell from The Good Place. She's but, great. Yeah, she is. I don't... 
She seems to be a little kooky, so that might explain the Dax Shepard thing. Well, maybe he's a really nice guy. He could be. He could be, but Jesus Christ, he's a fucking idiot. Well, maybe he's just a really maybe good she, actor. Maybe she no, likes he's, idiots. He's a fucking idiot. He, he, he was not just in Chips. Mm. He was the driving force behind making Chips. Well, then you should have led with that. <laughs> I Maybe wanted to save that one. I, you Apparently, know. you know, it's <laughs> some sort of fetish. Well, he's going to listen to this and try and get us on his podcast. Because <laughs> he has one. Apparently, yeah, yeah. So Tom's a character who likes knives and motorcycles and tattoos. <laughs> and that's just me. You apparently built your personality around this character from without a paddle. Subconsciously, I guess. Luckily, you're smarter than he is. Yeah. Thank God for that. <laughs> It'd have to be, though. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's one of those really low bars to clear. <laughs> but still, the similarities are there. It's disturbing. Mm -hmm. It's disturbing. I mean, he takes a bullet and goes, oh, cool, I'm going to get a neat scar. And I'm like, yep. That did happen to you. So, um... How come scars on men are cool, but scars on women aren't? Scars on women are fucking awesome. They are? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I was gonna say it's a badge of honor. Yeah, fucking battle scars, man. Okay, so uh, yeah, but the car won. <laughs> true, true. Ouch! Emotional crit. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, these are our characters. God damn it! Billy dies. Uh, off screen, unfortunately. Okay, here's <laughs> unfortunate. The, here's the fucking thing. This movie keeps setting up really good slapstick moments and not delivering them. For again instance, and again. when Billy gets into his like vintage Woody to drive off and live a life of adventure and everybody's like, yeah, he's going to go out there and he's going to make something of himself and we all are. And I expected them to cut to a shot of them watching the car drive away as a fucking Mack truck T-bones it and I, just... <laughs> I thought it was going to explode. Right? Yeah, that would have been funny. Right? <laughs> the joke they set up that you don't deliver. See, this is another problem with the screenplay, and it's another one of those first screenplay things is, it's a, it's sort of a comedy, but it so takes itself seriously. One hundred percent. This is like, this is a movie that meant something to the people who wrote it. But it doesn't mean anything to us. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't try to make it mean anything to us. Well, they, they, they even later in the film say, hey, the worst thing you can do is waste your time. Yes! But we'll get After there. After they wasted our time. <laughs> yes! <laughs> By the way, another character named Cherry leading the, the charge here. Oh, okay. yeah, but with a J instead of G. So we get our introductions <laughs> to these characters and As their adult lives. Yeah. So Jerry, played by Matthew Lillard... Do we is start like, with him? It doesn't matter. Oh, we'll okay. get back to the other people if we don't start with him. Right. So he's in like a board meeting where he's been sleeping, and now he has to make a presentation. And we cut to him surfing? Yep. And I took this to mean he got fired, but this is never mentioned. No. Nope. So after surfing, he goes home, and his wife... Has prepared, uh, but, but, but girlfriend. His girlfriend has prepared a nice meal for them for their anniversary, and he doesn't pick up on the obvious signs that it's their anniversary. Right. So yeah. she's fucking pissed. I forget anniversaries, but if somebody had a special dinner and was sitting around, it was like, our anniversary, of course. <laughs> mm, <yeah. laughs> not, not him, no. Yeah. So she immediately starts packing a suitcase that she had ready. Mm-hmm. This has been meaning to leave him for a while. Yeah. Ah. Uh, <laughs> he gets a phone call from his mom, except the answering machine is, hey, I can't come to the phone because I'm busy fucking. Yeah, basically. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And he gets the answer. Hi, mom. <laughs> yeah, who of course tells him that his friend Billy's dead. Right. So, uh, now Dan is a doctor. Right. Um, and some dude takes his parking spot. Right. It's like I don't see your name on it, and he's like, "It's right there." So the guy takes the 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 name sign and like bends it, bends it, and then like goes ah, yep, because you know that's a thing that happens. Uh, this see, this is why you don't 
tell people to get out of your parking spot, you just call a tow truck. Right. So, yeah, uh, Dan has a hopeless crush on his receptionist, slash possibly nurse, but it's like, dude, she works for you. Kind of inappropriate. Find somebody else. Yeah. yeah. See, I was kind of trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Like, maybe he just works in this office and she is the receptionist there. Mm -hmm. So maybe she doesn't get paid as much, but he's just another person working there. But no, he's this is his practice. Right. He employs her. Fuck's sake, Dan. Uh, get yeah. it together, dude. He walks in and he's like, TGIF. And she's like, I do not understand English for some reason. So she knows that he has a thing for her and is trying to deflect it. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Uh, Tom. Tom. Tom <laughs> is introduced. Uh, fucking. Half naked. Well, not they, quite they, fucking. They both have all their underwear on. And he's like. He you can still make that work. What does he say to her? Do you want to, like, ride Tom or some shit? Tom, like, you want to be on top? No, no. It was, there was he says, you ready for top or something? I forget. I think, are you ready for Tom? I don't. He, are you ready for Tom? Mm -hmm. And then he rolls over on top of her. Oh. And they're both they're both still in their underwear. But Whatever then, you're into, I guess. But then Tony, Tony. comes back again. Yeah. Another Tony. Mm, great. The See, there are, there are parallels between the two films. So Tony shows up and it's a woman. Yeah. So so immediately Tom's like, dude, threesome. So it's like, oh Tony, um, blah 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 blah. So she claws his chest and kicks him in, in into the bed. Yeah. Like so right in the solar plexus. Boom, and he goes flying. <laughs> yeah. And we cut away from Tom. <laughs> I assume there's just a half an hour of beating after that. I imagine so. Yeah. You know. So that's that's our fucking characters. So they they get together for the funeral. Well, eventually. Jerry calls Dan. They're there. And then Tom shows up halfway through it on a motorcycle. Right just, to the cemetery on a fucking motorcycle. Yeah, you know, yelling like at fucking them about, yeah. hey, where Is this Billy's park? funeral? Yeah. Where do I park? Jerry, is that you? Are you with Dan? Where'd you park? <laughs> I had a fender bender on the way in. But he didn't, because the there's nothing wrong with the bike. Yeah. It's like, dude... It's like he's making an excuse for being late, I guess. I guess, but like, it's not like he gives a shit. Mm -hmm. So Jerry summons him over, and... Uh, it's like, shh! Well, specifically, he says... Uh, well, I'm motioning says, with my yeah, middle finger. Me. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, blah, uh, blah, blah. Billy almost gets laid at his funeral. <clears throat> <laughs> Much to there's uh, some woman. Oh yeah, yeah. Often. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Dan said he still got a better chance than I do. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe Ford's such a fucking scumbag. Yeah, that's true. True. So, um, they're reminiscing about Billy and how many attractive women there were at his funeral, mm -hmm. and uh, they go back to their old tree house that they had. Fort Cooper. Young. Fort Cooper. Um, and they always treat Dan like shit. And it's like, I don't like Dan either, but I also hate them, so it's like... <laughs> yeah. What makes Dan so fucking special? Right. And so, yeah, they find their lockbox, which is like... Uh, their treasures. Yeah, it says D D.B. Cooper's treasure, and it's like, okay... To be fair, this was 2004, and the D.B. Cooper thing hadn't quite blown up on the internet as much as as now. Because, like, everybody knows about D.B. Cooper now. Right. But they have to explain to us who D.B. Cooper was. And D.B. Cooper was a dude who stole a bunch of money. And disappeared. Yeah, by jumping out of a fucking airplane over the Pacific Northwest. Right. And he was never found, so... Uh, Billy wanted to go find his treasure. He wanted them all to go. And since they couldn't go, he put it off and then he died. Right. So they're all like, hey, we have this box of our treasures. And it's like fairly collectible shit, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Old uh, C-3PO toy. Yeah, which looks fairly mint, but mm -hmm. not in the original packaging. Uh, uh, 
a Brian Bosworth card. Mm. Rookie is, card. Rookie card, yeah, which I would actually like that. I would frame that fucking thing. Put it up next to a, a fucking Stone Cold poster. <laughs> there you go. Stone Cold is a classic. So, uh, absolute classic. Uh, and what did the other dude have? Uh, his first condom. Yeah, which is it like, was unopened. Why is it your first condom? It's, Maybe it's the first you, you ever you, held onto in your wallet. You just had a condom, and your dad beat the shit out of you for having a condom that you took from him. And it's like, why is that important to you? What is the significance? Anyway, so um, they put everything back in the box because there's a map, right? to D.B. Cooper's actual oh, treasure. With the Indiana Jones compass. Yes. So they put everything except for the map back in the box, and they say, we'll leave it here until we come back with D.B. Cooper's treasure. This is important because later they just have the stuff. Maybe the dialogue explained, but I was too busy. Maybe they like, brought it with them? You would think, but they specifically said that it's whatever. You're expecting this movie to make sense? Yeah. Like, maybe they explained it. I don't know. So, <clears throat> they decide to all go to the Pacific Northwest to go find D.B. Cooper's treasure. Right. So, immediately they're just going. And it's like... Oh, in Billy's van. Or Woody. Yeah, yeah. Willie's Woody. So, they... Willie's Woody. They stop in a small town, and... Uh, Jerry calls his girlfriend. Calls his girlfriend. Who? Why is she still at their place? She had a suitcase. I guess she went back to pack up her things. Yeah, maybe. Like fully pack up, I guess. And uh, oh god, uh, there's this whole thing. They set it up that Seth Green has a sat phone, mm -hmm. and that you know that's what he can call on. So. The conversation with the girlfriend, I, this is another one where I genuinely expected them to pay something off. I expected, the way, with the way she was acting, that after he hung up, it would, like, pan over and she's, like, having an affair. Yeah. I was really expecting that. Yeah. Anyway, so, a local sheriff drives up. Right. And immediately, Tom, what do you start doing? You start <laughs> like, arguing, like, with like arguing with the sheriff and making fun of him badly. No, oh, so I'm here to with... deliver a box full of tasers. Didn't he say, say teeth, teeth first no. and then tasers? Yeah, probably. Because the sheriff's missing two teeth. Anyway, so yeah, the sheriff. Sheriff. The sheriff. The cherub. Is now mad at them. <laughs> yeah. I gotta stand up. And but then the, he lets them leave anyway. Yeah, I mean because they're gonna go like canoeing. Get, get, yeah, they're taking a trip down the river. Yeah, and he tells them that that's a bad idea, but whatever. <laughs> so they're in a canoe. Well, no, they got to rent the canoe. They rent a oh god, they oh, rent a canoe. They have to rent the canoe. And like the guy renting them the canoe, like thinks they're dipshits because they, they are. are. And uh, Matthew Lillard breaks a beer bottle on on the, the boat the, to christen it and the dude's like yeah thanks for putting broken glass where my children play yeah and Matthew is like oh sorry but he doesn't offer to clean it up or anything <laughs> to be fair it would be difficult at this point right uh, and then they fuck off they brought a bunch of beer right so they have a splash fight they spray a bunch of bug spray they poke each other with sticks. <laughs> that happens, yeah. Is this when they hit the rapids, or is that later? Uh, no, that's later. That, that's when they, they have to relaunch. They have to camp out under Grandpa's nose. They do. They, they look for the landmark. Oh, start running. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, there's a... a the landmark. Landmark, which is like a, a set of trees that looks like Grandma Grandpa's nose. I thought it was a rock, but all right. And they said, like, tree stump or something. Oh, okay. Anyway, so... <laughs> That night, is that when they run into the bear? Yes. Okay, the bear, played by Bart the Bear, who is the cousin of a more famous Bart the Bear. This is the famous Bart the Bear from Legends of the Fall and On Deadly Ground. Mm -hmm. This other, uh, younger cousin Bart the Bear is not as famous and 
I think not as good of an actor. <laughs> Frankly, I was not impressed by this performance at all. So anyway, the bear, um, they're running away from the bear, but they know they, they whatever, so, so Seth Green falls down and gets into a fetal position, and as the bear's coming up on him, my first thought... Is the bear's gonna fuck him? Yes, mm. that was my first thought, and I was like, that won't be funny, but at least it will be adventurous. <laughs> <laughs> So instead, the bear picks him up, carries him back to its den. And tries to feed it a carcass. Mm -hmm. which, which he has to eat. And then he throws it away when the bear turns around. Like, dude, it's a bear. It can smell that it's still there. Mm -hmm. But whatever. It... Whatever. <laughs> whatever. Anyway, soon they run up a tree. Yeah, because... <laughs> the bears can't climb trees. Apparently. <laughs> in this universe, apparently, in this alternate universe. So, the bear eats their sat phone. And all their food, and breaks the map. Rips the map. Yeah, rips it a little bit. So, they get back in, in their boat. I think the bear also drinks all the beer. Yep. Oh, and they see some rednecks. Mm, in the morning, yeah. Oh, yeah, in the morning they see a camp off in the distance, and they're like, this, this is great. There's well, no, they, oh, they, no, no, they, this is when they see them fishing. Yeah. Right, with the dynamite. dynamite. And that's why they have to yeah. launch in a different part of the river. And this is, this is weird, because this is the least successful dynamite fishing I've ever seen in my fucking life. They got, like, one fish per stick of dynamite. <laughs> You're supposed to be able to, like clear a section of river with that shit. <laughs> but yeah, the, our two rednecks are played by... Twiddle D and Twiddle Dumb. Why did I not write that dude down? I don't know. Because you, you only wrote the one dude down after the fact. Yeah. Uh, the other one, I've forgotten his name now. Like I knew it while we were watching it, but it's this dude who's been in a bunch of Kevin Smith stuff. Hmm. Uh, Kevin Smith told a lot of entertaining stories about the man. Okay. Because apparently after they'd known each other for a while, the dude like came out of the closet and then decided that he was a bear. And he's like, dude, it's amazing. They're all these guys, and they're just really into fat dudes. I'll like, they'll like be blowing me, and I'll take my gut, and I'll just put it on their head, and they're into it. <laughs> cool that he can find that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, well, I'm sure as hell don't find that very often. <laughs> right? <laughs> so yeah, that's Ethan Supley. That's this guy's name. Okay. And the other dude, I recognized as we're watching the film, this is Abraham Ben Ruby, as Dennis is his character, from the old TV show Parker Lewis Can't Lose. Yeah, when you said that, I recognized him. Yeah, he played the local bully, who eventually becomes Parker Lewis's friend, and Parker Lewis has to help him fight another bully. <laughs> well, he doesn't fight him, he just turns around and punch, punches a school bus to demonstrate how strong he is, and the school bus falls apart. That's pretty strong. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I think that's everybody I've written down here, Bart the Bear. Yeah. So, um... So they get lost. Yeah, because, you know, whatever. The map is ripped, and now they're in a different part of the river. Yeah, and so... now they hit all the rapids. And yes. And lose all their shit. Yes. And the boat. And the boat. You know what happens to the boat? It falls apart. Yeah, when they go over the, the big one, they all fall out of the boat, and then when the boat lands, it shatters. Oh, okay. For some reason, my mind, like, just planted part of the movie Roar here when the elephant destroys the boat. Neither of you have seen that, have you? No. Weird. And you have two copies. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> You're welcome. I can play that on, like, two TVs at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, 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 it'll round sound roar. 
it'd be like you know the, the rappers who just have like <laughs> Scarface, Scarface on every face on every TV. <laughs> I just have roar on every TV. <laughs> what a horrible thought. <laughs> that is the greatest. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, now they're they they have nothing left, and uh, they might still have the compass, but yeah, whatever. It's the, it's the compass. That's all they got. So, is this when they run into the rednecks again, or is that later? Um, hold on. Yeah, this is when they, uh, they come find their the... base. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they find their, their base, and they sneak down there, and they're, they're going to be all like, Hey, can you help us? And, like, if you have a phone, that'd be great. But instead, they notice that there are rednecks there who are doing something. They're... Chopping up the fish at the Oh, bottom. yeah, they're chopping heads off of fish to feed to their Rottweilers. Yep. So instead, our our group of people decide to hide in the barn, mm -hmm. which is full of weed. Yep. Because these are pot farmers. Now, this is a reference. This is a cinematic reference to a little film. It starts with a D. I've forgotten the title. You know, da -da 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 -da. Deliverance. Mm -hmm. It's a uh. reference to the film Deliverance, where a group of people out camping in the woods run into a group of pot farmers who sodomize them. And then Burt Reynolds shows up with his bow and arrow and, and kills one of them, the, the pot farmers. Mm -hmm. And they spend the rest of the movie absolutely convinced that the pot farmers are, are following them and, and trying to kill them off. But it turns out no, they've just been completely paranoid the whole time, and, and they murder somebody for no good reason. That's fucked up. Yeah. That's fucked up, yo. Yeah, good movie. Hmm. This one, not so much. Always annoys me when good movies are referenced in bad movies, mm -hmm. which will happen again in a moment. But uh, The only part of Deliverance I watched was the dueling banjo scene, and then after that I turned it off. <laughs> dueling oh. banjos is a good song. Mm -hmm. So you didn't get to... Uh, no. Sweet! No. That was not as much of a spike as I expected. <laughs> Probably because I was aimed this direction. Sweet like a pig. No. No, but I saw it reenacted in uh, South Park when it was uh, George Lucas and Steven yeah, Spielberg. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to what? Was it Indiana Jones or was it the Stormtrooper? Uh, either way. Oh, right. It was uh, Indiana Jones. Probably, but... It the Stormtroopers when they got arrested. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, so... So... Tom, again, you're causing problems. <laughs> yeah. Because Tom here decides to just start grabbing as much weed as possible. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So when one of them makes makes a noise and then the dogs spot them, right? You know these two rednecks um, kick down the door <laughs> and uh, guns aimed. Yeah, and the dudes are like, "Hey, uh, we got lost." Yeah, it, 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 it's not what it looks like. We're not trying to steal your weed, even though this guy has a bush launder his <laughs> arm. Uh, can we maybe borrow your phone? They're like. Our phone, yeah, sure. And then they start shooting. Yeah, yeah. And this is where the movie should have ended. Mm -hmm. Or even better, it should have ended on the rapids with them getting their heads bashed in on rocks. Oh, yeah. Like uh, like the dude from Deliverance. Mm -hmm. But no, instead... They... Spoilers, Steve. Yeah, whatever. It's an old movie, dude. You should have watched it by now. I, I told you I started it. Yeah, you should have kept going. No, because I knew that scene was going to come up. It's like one scene in I don't movie. care. Yeah, I don't need another new, bar new barbarian scene. Yeah, I'm not sweet. really big on this kind of scenes either. Anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm not sweet. about that. Anyway, uh, so... It is the year of the pig now. <laughs> it is. See? Now, uh, now's the time to catch on Deliverance, everybody. Oh, no, don't do it! <laughs> So they throw Dan through the wall. <laughs> yes, they do. That's how they use him as a battery ram. I actually liked that. That was that funny. Was, <laughs> yeah, that was possibly the best joke in the film. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and then they all run out, mm -hmm. and they spend the rest of the movie running away from these dudes. Right. Um, who are tracking them? They hit a tripwire, and these flares go off and set all the bottom on fire. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh shit! Now it's a stoner comedy. Mm -hmm. Which yeah, for a few minutes it becomes. 
the dogs get real high. Which is like, that's not how it works, brah. No. And of course, yes, our main characters all get really high. And then... Jerry hallucinates. Yeah. Like, they, they really start exhibiting when, symptoms that are not, like... When did Scooby-Doo come out? The live action. Probably pretty close to this. I was going to say, because then he played a stoner that close back to back. Eh, kind of a stretch. Shaggy is a complete stoner. In the context of the Scooby-Doo film, though, no one. In other Scooby-Doo media, yeah, kind of, but... No, they said, um... He's high on life? And, uh... Are you Birdman attorney at law that he was just stupid? Yeah, but like in the Johnny Bravo one, he was probably stoned. Yeah. Oh, I love that Johnny Bravo one. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. It is, it is like, not like a good, like, coalescing of all of the Scooby Doo jokes that had built up in, in pop culture up until then. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> So, um, Jesus. So, Scooby-Doo. Ah, uh, yeah. They, they yeah. have to hide in the river. Oh, yeah, don't don't they run off a cliff by accident or something? Not, not here. They jump into the water and they have the straws. Oh, yeah, they, they go in, yeah. But, the, yeah, they, uh, one of them falls into the water because he was running alongside his hallucination. Right. Who warns him about it, but whatever. Yeah, they... They breathe through reeds, mm -hmm. and uh, and one of them thinks that they are. Oh yeah, a bug flies down a reed into Dan's mouth. Dan's mouth. So he uh, starts choking. So Ethan Supley thinks that he's a bullfrog and wants to shoot him. Mm -hmm. Anyway, all the weeds on fire, um, and they're like the one guy's like. Oh, you should have set the, the flares further out. And it's like, dude, they just burned down the fucking forest. Mm -hmm. And also the weed. Yep. So, yeah, uh, they get away. And is this when they run into the girls in the tree? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because... Because now they're wet from being in the river, then... They send Tom up a tree with the binoculars, and he's just like, guys, I think I'm still high. Yeah. Because he so, saw two girls taking a bath. Yeah, Fully in their dressed. clothes. Yeah, so these are the two hippie girls in the movie who live in a tree mm -hmm. to, I guess, save it from getting cut down? I don't know. Yes. So, okay. I did not write down the names of these actresses or any of the other actresses in the film, because they don't have a lot of credits, but one credit they all seem to share is Xena, Warrior Princess. Which I watched almost all of, and it was ridiculous and fun. Some of it was ridiculous and fun, some of it was just ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is because this film was uh, made in New Zealand, where Xena was made, and so, yeah, if you're an attractive woman in New Zealand in the 90s, you are going to be in both of these things. Mm-hmm. Anyway, well, so... Well, 2004. Oh, yeah, it was 2004. So, yeah, like... They needed to work in a movie like this because there wasn't any Xena anymore. Mm hmm So... Uh, or was this when Xena was on her God-killing trip? I don't know. Maybe right after that. Because she'd already gone to Christian heaven and hell, right? Yeah. So they sent her to, like murder all the Greek gods. Like Kratos? Yeah, kind of. Oh. See, okay. God of War is just a ripoff of Xena Warrior Princess. Got it. God of so, Warrior Princess. So if Xena would have kept going, she would have been killing the Nordic gods, because that's yeah. what Kratos is doing right now. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, um... Gotcha. Of War. So... So, yeah, these fucking characters are... Basically, just there for PG thirteen titillation. Yeah. Uh, but this is the first of two instances where our heroes tell the story of what has happened to them, and people are impressed by it. <laughs> yeah. 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 So a little unrealistic is what I'm saying. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. A of little. Course, of course, time wise. 
like a lot about about their whole adventure. Does he? Mm-hmm. But I know he did later. Yeah. Did he do that this time too? Uh, I thought that was more Dan. More Dan. Dan was trying to impress the girls, wasn't he? He was, but also they. Oh, no. I think most no, of the wait, details were I, right. They gave each right? other new names because now Jerry is Slug and Dan <laughs> is Condor. Oh yeah, they all have to have forest names. I think Tom named himself Mighty Oak. Yeah, yeah, like Mighty that. Oak, yeah. Mighty Oak, Condor, and Slug. Yeah, because <laughs> because Jerry's the one who didn't name himself. Right, <laughs> Tom named Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> oh right, Tom and Jerry. Tom yeah. and Jerry. Tom and Jerry kids. And so. Dan. Tom and Jerry and Dan. Odd man out. Yeah. Modra always kicking the shit out of him. Yeah, he's the one that doesn't fit the name Skim. Skim? Skim. Scheme. Him and Billy. <laughs> well, Billy dies. Tom and Jerry and Billy and Dan. <laughs> you couldn't name one of them Sylvester and the other one Tweety? <laughs> Buds and Daffy? Yeah, they're... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe Wiley and Roadrunner. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so... So, yeah, they're all, like... Mm, Naked. Yeah, they're, pretty much. They're in their skivvies they're because their, skivvies their clothes are dry. Like, like uh, one of the girls has hairy legs, and that's, like, supposed to be a joke, I think. Mm-hmm. Um... And so they tried to call, like, rangers or something. Using the radio. On the radio. But instead... It's the rednecks. They, Yeah, they, they call the rednecks, because, duh, who try to cut down the tree with a chainsaw. Yeah. So the hippies have been saving their shit in bags. Yep. Wait, is it plastic bags? Paper. Paper bags. Okay. Oh, I'll take your word for it. Mm-hmm. Looked like plastic bags to me, but what the fuck do I know? So, oh, yeah, they were brown paper baggies. Okay, so so they start throwing Ooh. their shit at the rednecks. It's Meanwhile, it would Tom be. <laughs> goes down there and <laughs> ties up the. Uh, well, first he ties the. Oh, he ties the zip, the zip line. line. Right. Yeah. See, this is another of the parallels, parallels between the two films, is zip lines. Oh. There was a zip line, I think, in the obstacle course or something. Oh, maybe. Yeah. I don't remember that. And heavyweights, yeah. Swinging across this wood thing, but I don't remember any. Yeah, there was a zip line, I remember, because I was like, zip lines. Gotcha. That is the common thread between these films. (laughs) That is the signature touch of the auteur (laughs) making these movies, is they have to have zip lines. I'm going to assume all of Stephen Burrell's films have zip lines in them. I don't know. Including Sandy Wexler. (laughs) I don't know about <clears throat> Little Nicky, though. Maybe there's zip lines in hell. I don't remember very clearly. I There would be in my hell. Let's put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like zip lines? I can't hold on to things. I certainly they can't can support pro- my own weight on this They could probably strap you to one. <laughs> yeah, you could probably... Yeah. Anyway. You ever see the, the South Park episode about zip lining? Maybe. It's set up as one of those I survived such and such TV episodes. It's, it's I survived this zip. So they go on a zip lining tour. And it's so fucking boring that that's what they're trying to survive. It's oh, the hideous right. boredom of it. I, I think I remember seeing that in the background once. Yeah. Eventually, Kenny actually literally dies of boredom. Mm. You bastards. Yeah. Wait, is that the one where their parents are um, trying to get out of a timeshare? Maybe? Because I feel like there's one where the kids are all bored to death doing sports and the parents are trying to flight a timeshare. That's possible. Anyway, the big reveal is that Stan was the one who signed them up for zip lining, and everybody's very upset about him for that. <laughs> well, yeah. It killed Kenny. Yeah. So, you know, in my mind, as, you know, Seth Green is there really excitedly ziplining with his fucking fanny, fanny pack, pack, I'm just thinking back to, to South Park and, you know, Stan just very slowly mm. going across the zipline, like, mmm. <laughs> yep, real exciting scene you got here. <laughs> uh, you ever see the Walker, Texas Ranger th- clip 
where he's like really he's zip lining and they play the really exciting music the drama of it and he's just very slowly going down the zip line nope can they have sped up the footage they could have but they needed to fill time mm -hmm. it was walker texas ranger so tom steals one of their uh, four wheelers while they're being shit on yeah <laughs> and yeah, you said right then, why doesn't he just take the keys yeah. to the other one? Which would have been a smart move. But yeah. no, we have to have a four-wheeler chase. So yeah, we got three people on one four-wheeler, and the two rednecks are twin dragons in it on the other four-wheeler. Yeah. You know, in tandem. Mm -hmm. So, mind you, this is my motion for in tandem? What the fuck am I doing? Nobody knows, Steve. <laughs> You can do that on your own time. Yeah. <laughs> In tandem. Uh, so we get a chase scene. Two Hondo. No. Um, <laughs> the Wild Bunch. Um, so, yeah, we get a chase scene. And is this when they drive off a cliff? I don't know. Um, I wasn't facing the TV at that Or do that they point. drive into the river again? I forget. I think off a cliff into the river. They keep doing that. Yeah. Dumb shit. But this time they're only in their boxers. Well, Dan's in tidy whities The other two are in boxers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now they're wet, so they have to huddle together for warmth in the rain. No, it's not raining yet. They have to hike for, like, all day, and then they... And then it rains. And then it rains. This so is then... specifically because Seth Green was like, it can't get any worse... And so it rains. So then they have to huddle together for warmth. Yep. But then Matthew Lillard <laughs> talks Seth Green into getting a boner. Which mm. freaks Tom out. <laughs> well, Because it, would, it was, like, it? right in the crack of his ass, apparently. <laughs> yeah. So they're all upset. And then... Mount Burt Reynolds Man. shows up. Yes. Mountain Man Burt Reynolds. That is correct. That is the character Dell, played by Burt Reynolds from Heat. And Smokey and the Bandit. And Gator. Oh, yeah, he was Gator. Yeah. And a bunch of other movies, most of them very bad. Um, the Longest Yard? The Longest Yard, that was okay, yeah. That's probably the only good version of The Longest Yard. Mm-hmm. Because they remade it with Adam Sandler. <laughs> they remade it with... Who's the big, crazy British uh, soccer Vinnie player? Vinnie Jones. Vinnie Jones. Yeah, they remade that one a lot. Anyway, so. So. Yeah, why are we procrastinating when we could be done with this movie already? Yeah. Plus, we're not procrastinating. We're just like, we keep losing focus because it's hard to focus on this movie. That's true. Burt so, Reynolds has them all at gunpoint. Yeah. And drags them to his cabin. And he's sort of and, implying that he might kill them or do something to them, but instead he just like... Brings them into his cabin and sets Gets them a fire. Clothes. Yeah. And warms them up. They're all clothes from the 70s. Yep. Because this is D.B. Cooper's friend who was waiting for him when D.B. Cooper got lost in a blizzard. Right. So Burt Reynolds gives them a speech about the point of the movie, which <laughs> is don't waste your time watching shitty movies <laughs> like this one. <laughs> Go out there and Blah, blah, blah. Win one for the Gipper. I don't fucking know. <laughs> so, see, that's the real treasure, was the friends we made along the way. So... Hey, hush up now. <laughs> but that's literally... They, they fucking say something very much like that. I know, In the I next know. five minutes. Well, the rednecks show up at the cabin, because they've been yeah. tracking the boys. So, uh, Burt Reynolds shoots it out with them, chases them off. Yep. Blows up their ATV. Yeah. So, um, our main characters fuck off, mm -hmm. and I think fall down a mine shaft? No, no, mm. first they figure out that there's iron rock, which means D.B. Cooper's compass. compass would have fucked him over. Right. And he would have ended up right here, and they fall down mm. a mine shaft. Right. And there he is, right here. Yeah, right here. And there's his corpse, and he burnt his money. To stay alive. To stay alive for a few minutes. And they're all like, and this is the meaning of our journey. That this is the treasure, this message that D.B. Cooper has given us about the importance of life. And let's 
throw away things that we could sell. <laughs> and then the rednecks show up, and I really... I've been wanting them to kill these fuckers for right? so long. There's so many moments where I'm just waiting for, like, just, boom, somebody's fucking head explodes, you know? Or It kind of made me want to watch Tucker and Dale. That's fair, yeah. Because I haven't seen it yet, and I hear it's all right. It's all right. It's good, yeah. And not all the jokes land. Right. But, but it's it, got to be better than It that. has some fucking moments to it. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you that People much. die. Yeah, oh, it's way funnier, yeah. too. Yeah. So. So Dan crawls out through a mine shaft. Yeah, like a little just oh, tiny yeah. tunnel. Yeah. He's just scooting along. Because he's the smallest. They have to sing to him to encourage him. And they specifically sing, okay... The entire soundtrack of this film is random cuts from somebody's fucking iPod playlist because it was 2004. <laughs> and it is just ra- no none of these songs have anything but the barest relevance to the scenes they're in. The main thing they have in common is like the era they came from except they keep scoring that up too. Well, a lot of them are just modern songs from 2004 though. Really? Especially towards the beginning, yeah. Huh. So, yeah. Oh, God, right. But there are a couple of bits with the music which I found kind of funny. One of which is they hear music and it's like, it sounds like Creed. And somebody's like, I never thought I'd be happy to hear something that sounds like Creed. And I realize, wait, they couldn't get Creed to sign off on this. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Wow. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so, yeah, they're singing Do You Really Want to Hurt Me by Culture Club. <laughs> Not Culture Club's best song. And here mm-hmm. is what, no, I actually think is the funniest joke in the film, which is the rednecks are there, and they hear this, and the one guy says, The hills are going gay. <laughs> <laughs> And then they join in and say, yes, we really want to hurt you. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then um, Dan creeps up on him with a tree branch and knocks him into the mine shaft with his friends. Right. Yes. That wasn't the best plan. Eh. Well, he was going to drop a grenade down there, so they, he, he stopped them from doing that. Mm. So well, they were <laughs> fighting, is what they're saying. See, they had a grenade they were going to drop in the hole to kill the dudes, right. but they, they dropped it... Uh, Unpin pulled yeah. uh, when they fell in. What I wanted Dan to do was pull the pin and drop the grenade in the hole. Yeah. Well, he was about to, and all four of them shout, No! Well, no, he's threatening to. He's threatening to. He's like, he Guys, I got pulls. this! And they're yeah. all like, No! Yeah. <laughs> and, okay, let me talk about this grenade for a second. This is a chrome grenade. Pineapple grenade. A chrome pineapple hand grenade, which means. <laughs> It is. Uh, it has the grooves, the scores, mm-hmm. to let shrapnel pieces tear off easily and go in every direction. Right. It's meant to kill everybody in a room. So a fragmentation grenade. Exactly. Yes. But again, it's chrome, which is weird. Kind of show offy. Yeah. <laughs> weird flex, but okay. Um. <laughs> so yeah, eventually. Everybody gets out of the mine shaft because the sheriff showed up. The sheriff showed up. And it turns out the sheriff is in on it. Not only in on it, he's in charge of it. In charge of it with the rednecks. So then Seth Green takes the hand grenade, pulls the pin. Uh, He passes it off to Jerry. Oh, yeah, Jerry pulls the pin. Yep. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to fuck us all up. And walks towards the rednecks, and they're like, no, no, no. But then his friends walk up behind him like, yeah! <laughs> He's like, dude, I thought you were going to run away! <laughs> He's like, you don't know us very well, we're stupid. <laughs> well, we missed the part where uh, Jerry fishes the phone out of the bear poop. Oh, oh right. yeah, yeah. they bury the phone, they find the phone in the bear poop. So He calls his girlfriend. He calls his girlfriend, and then the phone gets shot. Yep. You dumb fucks. Yeah, so... I'm not talking to the characters. I'm talking to the people who wrote this. <laughs> Just don't bring the phone back. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he calls. He gets a phone message that says his girlfriend broke up with him. Right. 
Jerry and so and so are no longer doing it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so back to the grenade moment. Uh, does he trip and drop it? I don't know. Anyway, and no, then he th throws it no. at the base of a tree. No, first. Oh no! The guy punches him. Oh. And he loses it. Right. Yeah, and then he either throws or kicks it at them as they're running away. It right. lands at the base of a tree right in front of them, explodes as they run ten feet away from it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay, the fragment, the fragments must have, like, Pierced got them, them the yeah. shrapnel. They, they so must be dead. A real grenade has about a 30-foot explosion radius. They would have been fucked. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the problem is it had that extra layer of chrome on it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that fucking extra layer of chrome paint <laughs> fucked all the explosion up. Yeah. yeah, so we get this tiny explosion, and they're like, oh, but they're fine. And so, so then they're going to kill the good guys, but... Then a tree lands on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it doesn't, like, hurt them or anything, but I guess they're stuck in a tree. So, yeah, uh, the bad guys get arrested... Ethan Supley is like, yeah, yeah, we did crimes. How you like me now? <laughs> I'm surprised yeah, we that did wasn't it on so the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, we did. I don't know. Anyway, so, yeah. Uh, Burt Reynolds shows up and gives the main characters $100,000, which they give all of to Tom here, because <laughs> he's the one who's broke, because right. he's a degenerate gambler. <laughs> yep. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, and the other two, like, Matthew Lillard, for some reason, still has a job, I guess. Uh-huh, and a girlfriend. Even though he... Oh, God, oh, the you... surfing thing. Oh, that... When the surfing comes back. When the oh, boat uh, turns over, he surfs on it. Yeah, and, like, does he lasso? He lassoes other... Dan. Yeah. Turns it's... out Tom's under the boat. And it's like... Physically, that does not make sense. That is not how surfing works, Tom. Surfing well, well cow. Jerry. Cow. Jerry. Yeah, so... Mm, so, yeah. Maybe he becomes a surfing pro later. I don't know. He doesn't have the money for it, but whatever. So he gets back together with his girlfriend and proposes to her. Yep. And it's like, why does... I guess she was dating this dumb fuck. She must be pretty stupid herself. Mm-hmm. That means they had been dating for at least a year to have an anniversary. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were already living together. Yeah, so there's something wrong with her. <laughs> uh, and Tom, uh, you become a camp, camp counselor? Yeah. Again, another parallel. Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess he's more of a Boy Scout troop leader, but still, it's close enough. And What's uh, the downstairs? Dan's now living in Billy's treehouse. With one of the hippie chicks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. To be fair, that's what you want to do with your life. To be fair, they might just be fucking up there. It's kind of messed up, though. Yes. And uh, that's the movie. Yep, that is our ending. Jesus fucking Christ! That that one was a. Li it wasn't. I'll say this, it wasn't the most painful thing we've ever fucking watched on this. No. And not even the most painful that I've put you through. That is also true, because... <laughs> it wasn't no green beret or bullet. <laughs> on the other hand, I was too busy bitching about this to get bored. Yeah, exactly. There's so much wrong with it, and it's wrong in such a weird way. Like, the dialogue of it is just so on the nose constantly. Mm -hmm. And, like I said, it feels like you are reading a bad screenplay by somebody who thinks they're saying something important about their own life. It's just a fuck. It's just a fuck. It's just um, a fuck. It's, it's a thing. It's like... It's a thing. It's like, I genuinely wish that Stephen Brill had written this one himself. <laughs> it would have been such an improvement. <laughs> I didn't like this movie. Yeah, it's... I had several actors I like in it, and I didn't like them in it. Yeah, they were all really bad in it. It was... But, yeah, it was bad in an interesting way. I will give it that much. Mm -hmm. It Ow. should be studied in film school. 
This is how you do not light a film. This is how you do not write a film. This is how you do not direct actors to act in a film. Mm -hmm. Especially actors who have been better in other things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What have we learned from Autor Month? Nothing! I was going to say, don't put Twinkies on your pizza! Yeah, there you go. There's one thing to take away. Yeah. Jesus. 